and welcome back to Forgotten Hollywood 2023. Yay! So this is the first video I'm making this year and I meant to have it up actually a couple of weeks ago, but I ran into some technical issues. You see, I wanted to do a tribute video for all the actors from the period that I focus on that we lost in 2022. However, after looking through three lists of celebrity deaths, I noticed that there were people I knew we had lost that were not being honored. So what I did was I looked through 10 different lists of celebrity deaths and I filtered out everyone I could find that worked in the film industry during the period I look at, which is the start of film through the year 2000. And I made a master list of 166 names. That's why it took two weeks. But during my research, I actually got to find out about a lot of people I hadn't heard about before, which was really cool. And I got to learn things about people that I had heard of, but didn't know those facts about. So that was cool too. Now I can't go over all 166 in detail because I would like to sleep sometime this week, but I've chosen seven who I think deserve a spotlight that I didn't give a tribute video to previously. The first person I want to look at is Clarence Gilliard Jr., who spent 40 years working in the industry. And he was in such iconic films as Top Gun, Die Hard, in TV shows like Matt Locke, Walker, Texas Ranger. He even directed an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. And this guy who was in these really iconic films only made three out of ten lists. I, I don't understand why this great actor who had some very memorable roles in very memorable films and TV shows was largely forgotten about when they put together the celebrity list. And side note, Nichelle Nichols didn't even make all the lists. She made most of them, but she didn't make all of them. And that I think is just wrong. The second person I would like to look at you may not know by name, but you probably know her voice. And that's Pat Carroll. She had 99 acting credits over 74 years in the industry. And her most famous role was as Ursula in The Little Mermaid. I first saw her as a very small child watching Cinderella from 1965, where she played one of the stepsisters opposite Leslie Ann Warren's Cinderella and found out that Ginger Rogers actually played the queen. As a child, I didn't know who Ginger Rogers was, but looking back, I'm thinking that was actually pretty cool. She also had several award nominations and won an Emmy in 1957 and a Grammy in 1981. Pretty impressive career. She made half the lists. Next, I want to cover one of the people I was actually looking for because I knew this person had died and I knew this person had an impressive career. But it was really hard for me to find a list that honored him. I don't recall his real name, but he was known professionally as L.Q. Jones. This guy was in everything. In 51 years, he had 165 acting credits. And just to remind you, an acting credit counts as one if they're in a TV show, even if they're in multiple episodes. This guy was in everything. He was in Cheyenne, Perry Mason, The Big Valley, 25 episodes of The Virginian, Columbo, The A-Team, Casino, The Mask of Zorro. This guy worked from 1955 until 2006. You know how many lists he made? Two. 
out of 10. The next guy is also very recognizable. Stuart Margolin. 123 acting credits over 61 years. He was working until he died. Starting in 1961 to 2022. He was in Kelly's Heroes. He was in Death Wish with Clint Eastwood. He was in The Rockford Files, James Garner. He was in everything. Very recognizable actor. Very versatile. How many lists did he make? Two. Why? I was telling my husband about people like L.Q. Jones, like Stuart Margolin, like Clarence Gilliard. And he pointed out something. He said that the actors who are ignored when they make their celebrity lists are the working actors that make Hollywood. Stuart Margolin, L.Q. Jones, Clarence Gilliard, they played support roles. They didn't star in a lot of things, but they had support roles. But you can't have a TV show, you can't have a movie with just a star. You gotta have the antagonist. You gotta have the support roles. Watching episode after episode of one person doing something by himself is really gonna drag. But but these guys are the are the backbone of Hollywood. They deserve to be remembered. They deserve to get the credit. And a lot of the people on my master list are actors like these who they may not have been in much and they were never stars but they were there and they supported the stars they supported the production they made things happen the next person i want to look at again shocking that they weren't on more lists is monty norman See, if i showed you a picture of him you probably wouldn't know but you know what he did, even if you didn't know he's the one who did it. He was a composer who created the theme for a movie called Dr. No in 1962. And his music, predominantly that theme song, is found in 136 soundtracks. Talk about the death of an icon. And he only made three lists. Credit where credit is due. The next person I'd like to look at is also someone you probably ha don't know the name. Probably wouldn't recognize him if you saw a picture. But you know his voice. Peter Robbins. A child actor from 1963 until 1972. At the age of nine, he started voicing Charlie Brown. He was the voice of Charlie Brown in The Great Pumpkin and a Charlie Brown Christmas. He also guest starred in a lot of TV shows, um, including The Monsters, Rawhide, Get Smart. And how many lists did he make? Two. It's just sad how these people are not remembered by society that they've given so much to. The last person I want to look at is someone who's a lot more modern but he's been working in the industry since 1977, until his death last year. And I apologize if I butcher his name. I apologize if I butchered any of the names on this list. But that is Tony Sirico. He had 79 acting credits over 45 years. He's known mostly for playing mobsters such as in The Sopranos, which is probably where he's best known. He was also in Goodfellas. And he even played a mobster in A Muppet's Christmas Letters to Santa. Which I find kind of interesting. But he was in a total of 74 episodes of The Sopranos starting in 1999. Which is why it counts, because it's before the year 2000. But one thing I found out about him during my research, which I thought was really interesting is that he actually was arrested for extortion, menacing, and carrying a weapon in 1970. Kind of makes you wonder how much of his 
performance was based on experience. So those are the highlights of the list. But like I said, there are so many more and it was really hard to pick. I, I was originally only going to talk about four people. But I, I just couldn't narrow it down any more than seven. And I didn't know who all of these people were when I found their names. But I'm including them. Because even if I didn't know who they were before they died, they still deserve to be remembered. They still deserve a shout out. Someone needs to honor them. I will catch up with you next time. Please enjoy this list of 165 stars of Hollywood from in front of and behind the camera over many decades of film. <laughs>